Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be making an oversized crew neck sweater. And the cool thing about the sweater is that you can make it in multiple variations with a pocket, without a pocket, color blocked, crew neck or turtleneck neckline. So you can really customize it to your exact taste. And I will have a separate video for the color block style. It's the same pattern, but it's set up a little bit different. And I wanna actually go into that more on doing that because you can actually apply that to other patterns too. And hopefully with the techniques I show you throughout the video, you'll be able to end up with that professional store-bought looking sweater. And with all that being said, let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you're gonna to wanna to grab three to three and a half yards of sweatshirt fleece or fleece a quarter yard of ribbing, and lastly your pattern. The pattern is available at properfitclothing.com and the link will be provided in the description below. And this pattern can be made in multiple variations. You can do a standard crew neck or turtleneck, one with a pocket and color blocked. Once you printed the pattern, it's best to cut the top edge and the side edge of all the pages. This will allow you to overlap the pattern from left to right in alphanumerical order. Once you have the pages all lined up, tape it together and cut out the size that works best for you. And this is just a quick reference to what your pattern should look like after taping it together. And since this is an oversized pattern, it's best to use the measurement chart to find the size that you're looking to make. You also have the option of making a standard crew neck neckline or a turtleneck neckline. The color block video will show the turtleneck neckline, but it's actually installed the same, so it's your choice on which one you want to make. And after cutting, you're going to want to end up with one back panel cut on the fold. And if you're adding a pocket, make sure you add the pocket guides. One front body panel also cut on the fold with the guides if you're adding a pocket. And if you're trying to make it taller or shorter, make sure you cut it at the adjustment marks on the pattern. Two sleeve panels. One pocket panel cut on the fold. Your choice of neckline cut on the fold out of your ribbing. And lastly, your cuff and waistband panels cut out of the fold. You're going to need two of your waistband and two of your cuff panels. And before we get started, for this project, we're going to be using a serger. Sergers are great for stretchy knit fabrics. They're going to allow the fabric to stretch and the thread not to break. They also cut and clean up the edges as you're sewing. I highly recommend using a serger for this project, but if you don't have one, it's totally fine. I'm going to show you another method for sewing stretchy knit on your domestic sewing machine. Switch your machine to a zigzag stitch with the higher width and stitch length. And by doing this, it will allow the thread to stretch with the fabric. And either method works great. I just don't want you to feel left out if you don't have a serger. Moving on to construction, grab your pocket panel, place the right side up, and we're gonna add a stitch to both the diagonal edges. And this is gonna be a serge. You can also do a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger. Roll the edges over about a quarter inch, and we're gonna add a hem to both of those diagonal edges. This is gonna be the pocket opening, and it's best to pin it down after you rolled it over, so that way it stays secured down as you're sewing. You want this edge to look straight as possible, and we're going to add two stitches. It's going to add for a little bit different look, but you can add one or two, and it's totally up to you. Grab your front panel, place the right side up, and since we're adding a pocket, we're going to cut directly on both of those guide marks. And it helps to mark the center for easier pocket placement. And go ahead and do the exact same thing for the back body panel. Grab the center of your front body panel, and with the center markings, line up the pocket on top of the panel. And with the top of the body panel, place it directly on the top edge with right sides together. Make sure all the layers are lined up, and we're going to stitch along that edge. And again, if you don't have a serger, use a zigzag stitch and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. And try to keep this stitch as straight as possible because it's going to be on the center of your crew neck. Grab the bottom of your front body panel and we're going to place it directly on the bottom edge of the center panel and stitch along that edge. It's going to be a little thick with three layers of fabric here. So just take your time here and make sure that you have all the layers lined up because also again this is in the center. So you want these edges to be perfectly straight. And after sewing we're going to add a top stitch to both of these edges. So flip the seam allowance away from the center panel and add a top stitch. We're gonna be using a presser foot that has an edge guide on it. This will help you get an even stitch around those edges. And this presser foot really helps you keep a nice straight stitch with a perfect evenness to the edge all the way down that seam. And since these seams are right on the front, just take your time, go slow. If you're not using the presser foot, you can still make it look nice. And when you're done, do the same thing for the other edge. And if you don't want the top stitch look, you don't have to add them, you can just skip ahead. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the back panel. So line up the center of the middle and the top, stitch along that edge, place the right sides together for the bottom and the middle panel, and stitch along that edge. Once the layers are all sewn together, we're gonna add a top stitch to both of those edges. So point the seam allowance away from the center panel and add your stitch. And it might seem weird we're doing this for the back panel too since we're not adding a pocket to the back panel, but the reason we're doing this is so that way the heights match up for both front and back panel. 
Make sure all the stitches are looking straight and grab both your front and back panel, place the right sides together and line up those shoulder edges. Once you have them both lined up, stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the right side up and we're going to add a top stitch by folding the seam allowance towards the back panel. You can also use a cover stitch machine instead of a straight stitch. That's another machine that is great for stretching knit fabrics and I'll try to include it in future videos. Moving on to the arm panels, grab both of your arm panels, mark the centers on your arm panels and we're going to place the right sides together lining up the shoulder seams and that center mark. And it's going to look a little awkward with both of the curves going in opposite directions. I highly recommend using pins so that way you know the middle and end marks. And I think it's best to slightly pull both of the layers towards your body as you're sewing. So that way the fabric lays straight and it's easier to get a nice straight stitch on that curved edge. But it's best just to take it slow. And once you're done, we're going to add a top stitch to that edge. Point the seam allowance towards both of the body panels and add your stitch. And at this point, you're probably getting pretty good at top stitching, but honestly, that's the best way to go. It's good practice, and it really brings out that professional store quality look. And repeat this for the other arm. Moving on to the side seams, flip the right sides together, line up the body panel seams and the armpit seam, and what we're going to do is sew along that edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. With the side seams, you really want to take your time because you want to make sure all those seams line up on the body panels and also on the arm, which forms the armpit seam. But again, if it's off a little bit, it's not that major of an issue. It's always something to work on for the next one. Flip the right sides out and check your seams. Make sure all the layers got sewn together and you can add a top stitch if you want or you can move on to the next step. Grab the neckline panel, place the right sides together and stitch along the shorter edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're going to do the same thing for the cuff panels and also the waistband panel. Place the right sides together and stitch the shorter edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. And I found using a straight stitch machine on ribbing is the best way to go. Most ribbing has spandex to give it that stretch and bounce back. And using a straight stitch will help reduce the bulk when folding the cuffs over. And once you finish sewing the ribbing panels, what we're going to do is fold it in half hamburger style with the wrong sides touching. And as you can see, it makes for a nice rounded bottom cuff edge. And we're going to repeat the same thing for the neckline and the waistband. And when they're folded, you can see the lengths of the cuffs. You can also customize them by shortening them or adding length. And this is going to give you a whole different look and style. And to attach them, flip it inside out. And we're going to start with the waistband panel. Place it on the inside of the bottom edge with the rolled side facing towards the neckline. And as you can see, it's smaller than the actual width. And this is because you stretch it and it pulls it back towards itself to cinch at the bottom. Do the same thing with the cuff panels. Place the rolled side up towards the shoulder seam. And lastly, the neckline panel. And the seam on the neckline panel, I like to line up with the shoulder seam. It gives her a more smooth transition when going from shoulder seam to neckline. And once you have them all pinned on, go ahead and sew all the way around each edge. This is one of the more tricky parts because you're sewing so many different layers together and you want to make sure that they're all lined up. The ribbing panels love to separate, so definitely keep an eye on that as you're sewing. But if you end up missing a little part or one comes unaligned, it's totally easy just to go back and sew over it. I would say the neckline is the hardest one to sew because you're working with such a small piece of fabric. So just take it slow and remember to pull that ribbing panel towards you. Since the ribbing is actually shorter than the width of all the openings, you have to pull it so that way you match the width. And for the final step, we're going to add a top stitch to all of the openings. Starting with the neckline, fold the seam allowance towards the body and stitch all the way around. And I know I said it before, but this is one of them where you really need to keep that stitch straight because it's right on your neck and it's very noticeable when the stitch is off just a little bit. But just like anything in life, it takes time and practice to really get these stitches right on the first try. Moving to the cuff panels, face the seam allowance towards the top of the sleeve. Pulling the bed off your machine really allows you to get into that small area and stitch around the edge perfectly. And lastly, the waistband panels, we're going to flip the seam allowance up towards the neckline. And we're going to stitch one half at a time because since it is a straight stitch, it's prone to breaking when it's stretched. So start at one of the side seams and work your way towards the opposite side seam. Once you reach the other side seam, we're going to stop and start a new stitch. This is going to allow you to be able to stretch the bottom without the thread breaking. And this is a technique you can apply to other stretch knit garments if you want a straight stitch on a stretchy fabric. 
and again you don't have to add these top stitches you could totally be done without doing this but i just think it adds that professional nice touch and there you have it thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel i hope you got a lot from this video in like each video, I want to try to include more sewing techniques and little things that really take your sewing to the next level. Also, if you ever have anything you want me to make, send it my way in a comment or on my website. I'll definitely get around to checking it out and see if I can make that happen for you. But other than that, thanks again for watching. I'm going to keep the videos coming at you, so I'll see you next time. Gotta think about it, gotta dream about it.